This is a quick demo of how I use the Audio-Technica AT3350 lapel microphone. Now when I tell some people that I actually pass the microphone output through a DI box, uh, something that's typically used for picking up instrument level signals from things like electric guitars, they are surprised. I bought the Audio-Technica lapel mics some years ago, really on a whim, didn't have a lot of money, and uh, immediately noticed that the noise floor, for me at least, was you know quite bothersome. The typical way that you use this microphone is that it's what's known as an unbalanced output, and it splits that output between left and right channels and sends it to a one eighth of an inch connector. Typically how it's used is to plug this into the normal microphone input, in something like a digital SLR or a Handycam. So what I did was to do away with that one eighth of an inch connector for a start off and put on a quarter inch plug. Now this is the quarter inch plug that I soldered on. You don't have to do that to uh, use this. You can actually simply use an adapter to a quarter inch. Um, anyway, you'll notice that this is simply um, a tip ring it doesn't have the middle sleeve because what's happening is that the, the ground is going to the sleeve and then the hot wire, since this is an unbalanced output from the microphone, I've simply soldered to the tip connector. Now this goes in here, you can see, um, this is a fairly cheap DI. It's what's known as an active DI, meaning that it doesn't have transformers. It's actually solid state, uh, uses operational amplifiers in place of a transformer. And for this reason, you do actually need to power it with a, a PP3 9 volt battery. The reason I bought this is that it's very low noise and there's practically no power lost between the input and the output. And you do get a little bit of power loss if you use transformer DIs. So you can see now, here I am, I'll put it into the input socket. On the output socket, for the purposes of this demonstration, I've actually got everything plugged into a mixing board. And this is really for convenience so that I can demonstrate the uh, microphone with the, uh, the DI and without the DI uh, and also be able to talk about it because I've also got a third mic plugged in here which uh, is picking up my voice. Okay, so this is the version of the lapel mic that's going to go straight into a connector that goes into my mixer, splitting the channels between left and right, no DI box. Meanwhile, from another Audio-Technica lapel microphone, I have an input going via the DI, again into my mixer. And so this is actually a balanced signal that's now coming from the DI. Another advantage of uh, using this system is that now I can have very long cable runs. The balanced signal path was designed to eliminate noise. And so I get a much lower noise signal if I do actually want a longer cable run between where the microphone is and where I'm actually picking it up. Now, of course, you don't have to use a mixer like this. What I typically do is run the, the XLR uh, output, the balanced output. These are XLR connectors, either into a handheld device or, in fact, even if I now was to take this balanced signal and only use half of the, the uh, signal path, the hot and the ground, solder that to the type of stereo connector that was originally on, put that straight into my camera. I've actually got one here. Okay, so from the DI box, I can actually take the XLR signal, goes to a, an eighth of an inch connector, and the output from this is then split between the right and left channels of my uh, video camera. And even though uh, I'm not getting the advantages of a, a balanced signal, as I would, for instance, if I was directing this signal into a handheld recorder, I find that the, the noise level is still much lower. Okay, so let's test this out. So what I'm gonna do now is turn off the microphone that you're hearing my voice through. Okay, so now you're, you're actually hearing my voice. I'm holding these lapel mics just in front of me. You're actually hearing my voice um, through one of the lapel mics. And the one I've actually chosen just randomly first to show you is the one that's going through the DI box. And it's a very clear signal. 
you can hear a little bit of background hiss. Now I'm going to turn off this mic. Now this is the Audio Technica simply going straight into the mixer and you can already hear a lot more background hiss. Now what I've done here is simply pan the mic that doesn't have the DI over to the right and the microphone that has the DI over to the left. And hopefully you can hear the difference in the, the, the noise floor. A bit more hiss on the right I'd say. Quite a bit. And so I'm going to pan them now back to the middle. Okay, so now we just have the Audio Technica without the DI. The Audio Technica with the DI. I'm just going to bring it a little closer. Now, I've actually got it, these microphones about where my chin is, which is, you know, um, very proximal position. Something like you'd get if you pinned it to your lapel. So this, remember, this is the microphone through the DI. Now to me, um, I hear a clearer sound, as well as the fact that the noise floor has gone down. To me, it's, uh, the, the frequencies seem a bit more defined in the higher frequency range. I'll just swap that now. Now we're li listening to the Audio Technica without the DI. Obviously the noise floor has increased. But to me, it's a slightly more veiled sound. It's not as crisp as if it goes through the DI. OK, that's pretty much all, all I'm going to show you. Um, I was uh, thinking of putting the, the microphones, um, locking them into a soundproof box or something like that. But I think the sound is uh, so distinctively different between the two microphones, uh, demonstrating in particular the noise floor difference, that, that it's probably not necessary to do that. So I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to get lots of comments. So goodbye for now. Similarly, if someone were to feel that their home was haunted, uh, they do not have to disclose that information either. So it brings us to a really important point. If you are buying a property and those things are of concern to you, those are questions that we have to be asking. So whether it stems from a cultural concern or it stems from you're maybe a little bit like me and you find these things just a little spooky, it's important to ask the right question.